Hello everyone, today is 7th of June and welcome to the newspaper analysis. Now guys, first of all, let's take the overview of the entire newspaper and let's see that what are the important news articles today. Now, the first article we can see on to the first page pertains to the performance grading index that has been announced. We'll see that what are the findings here. Then guys, on to the first page here, you can see that a report has been published which says that more antibodies are produced by the COVID shield than the co-vaccine. Now guys, such kind of things are actually not very much important for the UPC examination. Then on to the first page guys here, the news with respect to the farmers convoy leading to the going to the Delhi, the metro, such kind of things are not important. Then on to the third page guys here there is one particular article that if uh, pizza can be home delivered why not ration so into the context of social justice and welfare schemes we will be seeing this article. Then guys other news with respect to the rising number of cases etc is not actually very much important. On this page also there are no important news the local news and the local conflicts are actually mentioned. Then guys on to the same way page number 5 also the political news etc has been there not important for exam. Now coming to the editorial page. So first of all this particular article talks about the sedition that is imposed against the media. Now guys first of all the sedition has been taken too much into the detail into the last articles. So we will not be going because into this article nothing substantial has been mentioned. Only one judgment has been mentioned that is the Kedar Nath Singh judgment where the scope of sedition is being limited and now it is being invoked everywhere. Apart from this nothing important. Then guys here it talks about the origin of the COVID-19 virus not important because it is a controversy theory such things are not important then guys this article is talking about the book review that has been written by the Jairam Ramesh now guys with respect to the UPSC exam nothing important has been given here just a poem has been talked about now guys this particular article talks about the recently announced monetary policy by the RBI so here we will see the condition of the economy then guys the next article is this which talks about the behavioral change so into this article we will see that what are the seven steps towards the behavioral change then guys we will also be taking this article also which talks about recognizing the sex as a work then going to the next page guys this entire page is filled with the, the political news etc nothing much more important then guys coming to the page number 9 here we can see that NPR slips have been talked about for issuing for the long term visa we will see that what this entire article is. Then guys the other news are not that much important this article talks about the IT rules here government is giving the clarification nothing much important content is there. Then guys here we can see that uh, how the pandemic is impacting the tribal people we will see this article. Then guys other articles such as a positivity rate going down number of cases not important for our exam. Now guys here there is a small article where we can see that into one of the hospital into the Delhi that is into the Govind Ballab Panth Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research it was banned that the nurses cannot interact into the Malayalam. Now guys this is a kind of a discriminatory move because guys this thing is actually a fact that the healthcare workers many of them are coming from the Kerala and basically if they are interacting into their uh, mother tongue it is their own preference and state should not intervene into such kind of matters then guys the next page uh, it talks about mainly the issues with respect to the international affairs but guys nothing important with respect to the examination particularly which could be asked into the examination is there then guys uh, the money wise uh, with respect to the economy it is not there it is particularly with respect to the investing and such kind of matters so the guys this is all about the today's overview and now let's take these articles one by one now guys, first of all, let's have a look on today's GS quote. So guys, today we will be taking a quote from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, where the value of the selflessness has been explained. So here, it has been said that through selfless service, you will always be fruitful and find the fulfillment of your desires. So guys, here it has been said into the Bhagavad Gita that the higher order desires are the desires which are aimed towards the contentment, towards the performance of the ethics. And those kind of desires can only be fulfilled when a person is performing the selfless activity because the selfless activity satisfies the soul. Now guys, this particular quote can be utilized in our GS paper number 4 where the foundational values of the civil services have been provided into the syllabus. So guys, whenever we are describing such kind of foundational values to authenticate with such kind of sources such as Bhagavad Gita enhances the probability of your marks. So guys, that is all about this GS folder and now we will be taking up the newspaper analysis one by one. Now guys, taking up the first article, so here we can see that basically the Ministry of Education has announced the performance grading index. 
Now, guys, this performance grading index can be utilized as an important attachment under the GS paper number two under the topic of education. Now, guys, this particular thing is very much known that India is passing through the window of the demographic dividend and the year from 2020 to 2040 will be very much crucial as defined by the United Nations Population Fund. Now, guys, the demography needs to be educated, needs to be imbibed with the skill. So, therefore, the role of education becomes very much important and the national education policy of 2020 has also emphasized this particular thing. But guys, we see this particular thing that actually the status of education is very much poor. So in order to enhance it, this performance grading index has been announced. What will happen here? Here the states and union territories, they will be graded onto the education front. And guys, when they, the grading will come, it will induce a kind of a competitiveness. And by that, the status of education, the state of education will be improved. Now let's see some of the other aspects of this particular uh, performance grading index. Now guys, this particular index will be based on 70 indicators and these 70 indicators will be encompassing the domain of uh, with respect to the learning outcomes, the access and equity into the education, infrastructure and facilities including the basic infrastructure such as the availability of toilet etc. Then there are the governance and the management processes. So these are the 70 indicators. Now guys these 70 indicators out of these 70 there are the 60, 16 indicators which are based on to the learning outcome and they are derived from the national achievement survey. Now the last national achievement survey was done for the classes 3rd, 5th, 8th and 10th and it was announced in 2017. So guys, the last three, the three editions of the uh, this particular index, the performance grading index, they have been taken from this particular survey. Then guys, the other 54 parameters or these particular indicators, they are based on the central databases which are collected from the district level as and they are updated regularly. So this is the, uh, the basic uh, parameters. Now guys, it has been provided that updating this particular survey regularly will serve two purposes. Number one, the competition into the states and union territories will be ensured, which will having a kind of a positive effect. Secondly, it will also identify the crucial gaps which are there on into the states and union territories and the specific, specific areas where the work has to be done. So onto these two dimensions, it will be helpful. Now guys, the finding of this year's survey we will see. So here we can see that the Punjab has topped the survey with the score of 929 out of 1000. And not only Punjab has topped, but the Punjab's improvement has also been very much impressive. Into the last survey, its score was 769. And basically in terms of equity, infrastructure, governance, it has shared the spot with the Kerala also. Now guys, the other states which have performed good, the first uh, then uh, the comes the union territory of chandigarh after that guys tamil nadu and kerala are the good performance the tamil nadu had the score of 906 where the kerala has is having the score of 901 then guys the, the most uh, poor performance is by the union territory of ladakh which has the score of just 545 now you don't need to remember the absolute numbers but just keep in mind that which has topped which is the lowest and when we are talking about the top states guys many a times a kind of an impression comes that it will be either the Tamil Nadu or Kerala but be a, uh, careful on to this particular aspect. So guys that is all about this article. I hope that you have understood it and now we'll be moving to the next article. Now friends this particular article uh, has it will be very much important for our GS paper number two under the topic of social justice as well as under the welfare and hunger. Now before taking up the, this article, we will be taking up some background information. See guys, according to the Global Hunger Index, India's rank is 94, which is actually a very sorry state of affairs. India is performing in many of the indicators even worse than the African sub-Saharan African nations. Now guys, even the World Food Programme has also said that the hunger pangs in India, they have become very much uh, intimidating into the light of the pandemic of COVID-19. Now guys, overall, to solve the problem of hunger in India and to provide the social justice to the people, the government has announced the National Food Security Act way back in 2013. Now, first of all, let's see the brief provisions of this particular act and then we will be coming into the present article. According to the National Food Security Act, it has been provided that the 
poor households will be uh, basically uh, bifurcated into the two categories there will be the priority households and then there will be the antyodhya anyojana households the antyodhya anyojana households are the poorest of the poor people now guys according to national food security act 66% population of the entire country will be provided the highly subsidized food grains now here first of all the priority households they are eligible that per person 5 kg food grains will be provided however the antyodhya anyojana households there the allocation is made on to the basis of a household and 35 kg per household is provided fine now guys under the national food security act basically the center has the responsibility that they will procure the food grains fine now for the procurement we are basically issuing the msp and all such kind of things will be done procurement will be done by center the storage will be done by the center the transportation will be the responsibility of the center then the states need to identify the beneficiaries and actually allocate them via the fair price shops now this is the entire mechanism under the national food security act now guys what had happened the delhi government had came out with a particular initiative to provide the food grains to the people according to the delhi they are saying that 4 kg of wheat and 1 kg of rice will be provided to the priority households which in total it will make 5 kg this 4 kg of wheat will rather be processed into the flour fine it will be milled and it will be processed then this 1 kg rice it will be cleaned and then it will be packed hygienically and then it will be provided and along with it 1 kg sugar will also be provided and all this entire package will be given uh, will be provided as a home delivery to the beneficiaries households fine now guys this particular scheme is actually very good as it will be solving a large number of problems and actually the social justice onto the ground will be delivered let's see that how it will be helping number one guys when we see into the national food security act the poor people they had to visit the fair price shops and when they are going it many a times the entire days wages are lost because it is actually a very tardy process if you see it on to the ground moreover guys many a times they are basically the fair price shops they are not operational they are not open they say that the ration has not been there okay and many a times the two to three trips are also to be made now the poor people who are earning their wages every day for them it is actually a kind of a very problematic affair then guys the disabled people particularly as you can see into this picture fine they also have to physically visit these fair price shops and actually it is not a kind of a good thing for them so accessibility issue for the disabled is also there then guys the crowd management has to be done into the pandemic for pandemic of covid 19 and food is a necessity and if the people will be having making a crowd outside the fps it will be also violating the covid appropriate behavior then guys there is one more philosophical aspect also comes here see the consumers are always seen into a light that only the basic needs are to be given to them but now guys the idea of consumer citizens are coming and the consumer citizens are one who are to be provided the best of the best quality of the public service so guys going with the notion of consumer citizens which had come into the 21st century particularly after the lpg reforms the citizens are to be provided the best public service delivery now guys all these particular purposes will be solved by this particular scheme but guys there is a kind of a tussle that has been there between the center and and the the government of delhi the center earlier said that this particular scheme cannot be rolled out because it uses the name of mukhya mantri ghar ghar ration yojana that particular thing was dropped and then guys other kind of problems had emerged between the center and the state and this such a good scheme is not being implemented but at the end of the day the sufferers are the citizens is it clear now guys according to the government of delhi justification has been given that all this particular process that is procuring the food grains cleaning them packing them will be happening under the cctv camera so that there is no corruption there is no uh, kind of a diversion of food grains then the vehicle into which these uh, basically all these kind of uh, packets will be put it will be gps fitted then the actual beneficiary via the epos terminal their identity will be uh, verified fine and the proofs will be kept into for, for such kind of thing but guys still there are the irritants there are the ideological clashes there are some other kind of uh, problems and because of that the scheme has not been is, is not coming onto the ground so guys that is all it can be utilized as a case study that how the federal irritants actually are obstructing the social justice delivery and now guys we'll be moving to the next article 
no guys this article uh, was the talking about the recently announced rbi's um, monetary policy stance and it is talking that how the reserve bank of india is right now into a dilemma and this dilemma is actually a kind of a problematic thing for the indian economy now first of all guys the monetary policy committee it has been given the task that with respect to the management of inflation into the india they have to take the steps now guys earlier monetary policy committee is completely under the purview of the rbi but now particularly after the recommendations given by the urjit patel committee monetary policy is is uh, basically the in the under the purview of the reserve bank of india as well as representatives of the government now the chairman of the monetary policy committee is the rbi chief now the monetary policy committee had announced the benchmark rate the benchmark rate is basically the repo rate repo rate is that rate on to which the reserve bank of india is providing the money to the commercial banks now guys if there is the situation of economic decline then this repo rate is also reduced so that the banks can get the cheaper money and that money can be provided to the people into the forms of loan with the soft rates here now guys what had happened the reserve bank of india announced the repo rate and basically it has not been changed okay now guys for entire one year since may 2020 we see the trend either the repo rate has been kept as unchanged or it has simply been reduced why it is being done simply to revive the economy to push the cheap capital into the economy so that people can take that money can invest it into the production capabilities can hire the new people can procure the raw material and entire economy comes into a kind of a boom now guys it has been seen that into 2020 uh, the quarter one there was the 24.4 percent negative growth rate or the contraction fine for the entire year there was a 7.3 percent of contraction and all this thing fueled at the end the entire entire 2020 the monetary policy committee's repo rate was it was either reduced or unchanged now when we see into the 2021 there was a positive hopes that were there but what has happened now the second wave of the coronavirus had come and it has actually reduced the confidence into the economic revival recently the reserve bank of india also announced the consumer confidence survey and this consumer confidence survey provided that 75 percent of the households they are facing a pessimism they face they feel that further the economic activity will go down and because of this particular purpose they are not ready to take any new loan they are not ready to do investment into the business enterprises and all such kind of thing is happening so guys even by keeping down the repo rate by keeping down the interest rates people are not taking the credit and actually the transmission is even not happening but guys even the repo rate cannot be increased there is a hope that something good will happen now guys even the reserve bank of india uh, had now into the monetary policy committee had slashed that the quarter one gdp projections will also be very much less earlier it was 18 point uh, earlier it was 26.2 percent which was projected and now it is being projected as 18.5 percent it is also a problematic thing and it shows that guys even the reserve bank of india is a turning pessimist about the performance of the indian economy now guys as the repo rate has been kept high at the same time the fear of inflation is also coming now the fear of inflation is because the every day the petrol and diesel prices are increasing the international commodity prices are also very much volatile and it will be reflected into the inflation because the movement of the food grains essentials are happening via the trucks and such kind of vehicles and they consume the diesel so the implication of high fuel prices will be replicated onto the day-to-day -day inflation now whenever the inflation goes up what we do we reduce it we, we also increase the repo rate clear so that basically it its a transmission happens into the economy and the infl inflation comes down but now there is no option of increasing the repo rate because the economy is also very much down so RBI is into the confusion what it should focus should it go for controlling the inflation rate in which case the repo rate has to be increased or should it go for the economic recovery for which the repo, ra uh, repo rate has to be kept at the same level or it is to be decreased is it clear so guys that is the entire dilemma of the reserve bank of india so guys i hope that all such kind of thing is clear and guys uh, you don't need to remember all the data just remember the data with respect to the gdp product, uh, projection etc because such kind of thing you can quote into your answers related to the gs paper number three where such kind of things could be helpful so that is all about this and now we'll be moving to the next article
no guys this article uh, talks about the right to work the idea of social justice for the vulnerable sections and therefore will be important for the gs paper number 2 now see guys when we talk about one particular section of our society that is the sex workers now the sex work traditionally into the indian culture has been seen as something which is immoral something which is highly bad and such kind of notion has even been taken by the ilo even the ilo believes that sex work is a kind of an unclean work as well as illegitimate work has also been it has also been called as because of this the governments around the world they have framed the policy where the sex workers many a times are denied the kinds of rights and the same thing is happening into the india also now guys from uh, uh, earlier also before the covid 19 also the condition of sex workers was not good but into the covid 19 the things had become even more worse because of the lockdown because of uh, the social distancing that has to be followed their livelihood has been very much compromised moreover guys what has happened whenever government is coming out with the relief package or whenever the unlocking process etc is going on there is no relief that is oriented towards the sex workers and this particular thing had made them even more vulnerable into this covid 19 pandemic and this as pandemic is being enhanced now it is more than 14 months so they are now even more exposed vulnerably now guys when we talk about the indian depiction of the sex work it has always been defined it has always been projected as something which is involuntary forced fine as well as it is through deception and therefore a kind of a template has become that the all sex workers are there by the force and therefore always the rescue and rehabilitation are talked about but guys there are certain women who who are willingly into this particular industry now guys when the women willingly are coming into this particular industry then also the problems comes they are seen as the women of compromised moral because it is believed that giving uh, basically giving the services of your body is not a hard work fine and the women of the compromised character only do this thing but this is a kind of a flawed policy when we consider that everybody has the bodily autonomy everybody has the right onto their body now guys when we talk about the legislation with respect to the sex workers in india it is the immoral traffic prevention act or it is also called as the peta act now this particular act provides that anybody who is keeping a brothel or soliciting uh, into a public place living of the earnings of the sex work and living with or habitually being in company of a sex workers they can be punished fine now this particular thing has a large implication on to the sex workers as well as people who are involved into this particular industry now guys there are certain problems of this particular legislation and this we will be seeing one by one number 1 it has uh, this act denies the individual the right over their bodies is it clear the life choices have been denied on to the adult citizens even the adult person's consent has not been taken into the account and it is going against the fundamental rights then guys the second thing it comes is that it has not only criminalized sex but it has also stigmatized this entire industry and guys still the sex industry is going on but it has went underground and because of that particular thing often they are not getting the health facilities they are vulnerable to the diseases such as hiv aids etc their exploitation is even more fine because as the industry is not legalized they cannot go and report when the exploitation is happening then guys the act also fails to recognize that many women willingly are entering into the this particular industry and basically they have a right that they should continue that particular thing is also not taken up into the account moreover guys it gives no agency to the sex workers to fight against the traffickers clear legal safeguards have not been provided anywhere into the act so therefore there are many of the issues with the present legislation so guys there is a need that going uh, in direction with the supreme court's uh, judgment given into the bandhav Kar, uh, bandhav karmaskar versus state of bengal in 2011 we should recognize that the right to dignity is also enjoyed by the sex workers and they need to be given legislative protection and this peta act needs to be amended in order to recognize their uh, basically right to occupation moreover guys during the time of the pandemic also many of the relief efforts are also to be given to these people now it has been said that a time has come that we need to rethink the sex from the perspective of a labor 
clear and the due recognition is to be given to them because guys always such kind of argument is made that at least recognizing them will be helping fine you can pro basically you can provide them the health facilities you can provide them the safety measures clear even the argument has been given that by this particular thing this activity can also be taxed fine however guys such kind of arguments uh, we often uh, the taxing and earning money out of it for the government are many a times we avoid it because at the end of the day there are certain other ethical implications also but guys there is a valid argument into this direction so please keep it into the mind onto such kind of an aspects the question could be there in gs paper number two as well as into the essay also so that is all now we'll be moving to the next article now guys this article uh, is talking about the behavioral change clear which is very much needed to implement any kind of habit Fine. Now, guys, we need a habit that the COVID appropriate behavior is to be adopted. But, guys, such habit is not being formed. Why? Because there is some problems into the attitude. So, here seven steps are being given. We'll take one by one. Now, this particular article will be important for the topic of attitude into the GS paper number four. Now, guys, it has been provided that uh, if we take some of the important global surveys, such as the knowledge, attitude, and practice survey, which has been produced by John Hopkins Center. Then we see that now the COVID appropriate behavior is actually going down into the people rather than increasing. Clear? It has been said that from July 2020 to March 2021, there, are, there is a drop of 5% into the people who are wearing the mask. Now people are afflicted with a kind of a pandemic fatigue. Now, here it has been said that there are the seven ways by which we can improve such kind of behavior into the people. First of all, it has been provided that the basic information is to be provided to the people. Now, the basic information is that why the masks are to be worn. There needs to be kind of an authenticated sources which are giving this particular knowledge. Because guys, most of the time, people are not knowing that why wearing the mask is important. This thing is particularly for the people belonging to the lower sections of the society in terms of income, in terms of knowledge. Then guys, the secondly, it has been provided that not only you need to give the information but the communication messages are also needed to customized according to the different different demographic profiles simply you cannot say that we are the mask they are needed to be the customized messages which actually highlight that what risks they will face fine then it has been provided that actually the benefits of sharing masks are needed to be provided by the way of testimonials. Now the testimonials, these could be the success stories of the people who wore the mask and they actually saved them from the COVID-19. Moreover, it has been said that the wearing of a mask needs to be made as a symbol of being cool. Fine. It needs to be being made as a symbol that somebody who is wearing the mask, he or she is being considerate and respectful for their family, for the other people. And it also need to be projected as a badge of being smart. Fine. So, uh, so that a kind of a more adopt, ad adoption for the mask wearing comes into the society. Then guys, it has been said that actually the influencers, okay, influencers, they are the social, uh, basically uh, social media influencers. They could be the celebrities. They could be the politicians. They should also wear a mask all the times. Why? Because people follow them. And by that thing, also a kind of an acceptance comes. Now guys, even the celebrity even the tv serials even the movies into that also wearing of masks should be very much normalized now guys this thing particularly has not came up till now so on to that we need to focus then guys there basically the uh, basically the government should work that how a kind of a vocabulary or a kind of a language can be brought which we can use when another person is not wearing the mask what could be the polite way of asking some wear somebody to wear a mask so such kind of a language also needed to be identified then guys there is the need of the compassionate leadership now compassionate leadership it means that the leaders also need to lead with the empathy into this times of covid 19 and they need to come out with the credible plans then it has been said that the media also need to be made responsible now guys there is a kind of a psychological reason that has been given it has been said that whenever any threat okay now the threat is covid 19 so whenever any threat is stronger than our perception is stronger than our understanding then all together we give up the fight now media is every day projecting that the covid 19 virus is so deadly so many people have died and so much negativity is being created that all together we have given up the fight we believe that whatever we might do we will get be getting the infected with the covid 19 and there is no rescue 
so such kind of thing is also making us to give up the mask and covid appropriate behavior so a kind of a positivity needs to be spread by the media that if you uh, wear the mask if you do follow the sanitation then you can be spared so such kind of thing is needed so guys these seven steps have been projected into this particular article i hope that you have understood it now guys these seven steps could be a ready made answer if any question comes into the ethics paper number 4 on to the appropriate behavior even into the case study if it is asked that you are a dm your district is seeing high number of covid 19 cases what steps you will take ready made answer you can provide the points from here so that is all about this article and now we will be moving to the next article now guys this particular article talks about a recent directive that has been given by the ministry of home affairs it has been said that the npr slips will be a valid document for the long term visa let's understand that what this entire issue is now guys you all might be knowing that the citizenship amendment act 2019 was passed and into the citizenship amendment act it was said that the minorities which are persecuted on to the grounds of religion coming from three countries that is the pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh they can apply for the citizenship into the india now guys number one question which religious minorities are there so there are six communities they are the hindus six jain parsis christians and buddhist clear they can apply for the citizenship now guys it has been said that in order to avail the citizenship what is the process number one the migrant should be living into the india clear now the migrant first of all needs to avail the ltv that is the long term visa now to avail the long term visa they need to give a documentary evidence what these documentary evidence could be these documentary evidence could be the npr slips that is the slip of the national population register now guys when we talk about the national population register let's see that what it is so the national population register it's kind of a just a kind of a repository of the usual residents of india is it clear a list of usual residents of india for the first time the npr was collected in 2010 under the provisions of the citizenship act 1955 and the citizenship registration of citizens and issue of national identity card rules 2003 so in 2010 it was prepared in 2015 it was updated guys there are the names of more than 119 crore residents into this npr now guys the further this npr will be updated along with the census exercise of 2021 fine so this is the npr so if their name has been there into this npr so they need to give these npr slips and they will getting the long term visa and after the long term visa they will become eligible for the citizenship so this particular issue have been talked about this now guys we used one more term that the npr is the register of the usual residents of the country who are these usual residents any person will be a usual resident if he had resided into any local area for the past 6 months or 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 more or a person who intends to reside into that area for next 6 months or more so into this particular thing the migrants can enroll okay if they want to live for more than 6 months okay and that particular slip can be furnished fine so guys this particular step is showing that government is moving forward into the direction of the implementation of the citizenship amendment act of 2019 which was severely criticized for which there was the protest that it is the violative of the fundamental rights because guys under the uh, basic uh, basic idea of the indian constitution there cannot be any distinction made on to the religion fine but such a distinction is being made here it is particularly violative of the right to equality under article number 14 and guys article number 14 you might be knowing that it is not applicable only to the citizens fine so that is all about this particular article and now we'll be moving to the next article now guys this article pertains to gs paper number 2 protection of the vulnerable sections now as the pandemic is going on the economic sufferings economic miseries are there for all the people but it is actually very much intense for the tribal people clear into this article it has been said that the tribal into the odisha they are getting suffered now guys if we see into the usual days what happen the tribals they collect their minor forest produce particularly the non timber minor forest produce now right now they are collecting their produce such as the uh, sal leaves siali leaves mahua flowers mango kernel karanja seeds char seeds tamarind etc 
now these particular seeds uh, sorry these particular products are sold into the market they earn money and by that they survive for the coming monsoon and for the upcoming months now guys for this particular thing even the ministry of tribal affairs had also came out with the initiative but it has been provided that actually none of this particular thing is reaching onto the ground now guys even the government announced the one dhan yojana under the one dhan yojana it was said that the mechanism for the marketing of the minor forest produce such as the thing that we discussed here will be made but guys actually the implementation on the ground has been very much weak it has been said that actually there will be the trifed now guys the trifed stands for the tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india it was created under the ministry of tribal affairs and actually this trifed this agency has a work that the forest produce whichever the tribals are collecting the market has to be provided to them is it clear how the the products can be given a kind of a value addition so that better prices they can get the tribals they can get the better prices all such kind of responsibilities onto the trifed now guys the online uh, e portals have e commerce portals have come so trifed has also given a responsibility that how onto these e commerce portals also or how onto a designated portal also the tribal products can be showcased and they can sold such kind of responsibilities of the trifed but guys both the trifed as well as the one dhoni yojana has not been able to translate and actually the tribals are not getting any kind of relief even guys there are the one dhan vikas kendra clusters which are made into the districts and it is their responsibility that the that they will be taking the tribal produces they will be helping them for the value addition processing cleaning etc but they have also failed according to this particular article moreover guys it has been provided that government also announces the minimum support prices for the minor forest produce and most of the products that even we discussed here for them there is a kind of an msp but that thing has also not been delivered to the tribal people into the odisha so guys this particular thing can be used as a case study whenever you are critically analyzing the government's schemes for the welfare of the vulnerable sections clear so guys that is all about this particular article i hope you have understood it so guys that is all for the today's newspaper analysis i hope that you are getting the utility into this initiative thank you so much